Welcome back to our community. Susie Thomas visiting with Don Catalana from Mathnasium of Belden Village. And uh, I've heard you say a word that I hear all the time because I do social media a lot. And we always talk and complain about how Facebook and Twitter are constantly changing the algorithm. Explain to me what an algorithm is. An algorithm is just a method of doing something. So like when we talk about the traditional algorithm for multiplication, we're talking about where you put the one number on top and the other number on the bottom and you multiply the ones placed by everything and then the tens placed by everything and then you add them up. That's an algorithm. Um, If you put down on paper um, eight divided by six, Mm -hmm. well, I guess that's not a very good example. It'd be hard, Um, but I can do it. (laughs) 24 divided by 6. Easier. You don't need an algorithm for that. Right. Like, you can do that in your brain. But kids are so dependent on being able to push the buttons Hmm. or, you know, write it down that I have to stop them. And I go, wait, how many times does 6 go into 24? And Mm -hmm. they're like, because that algorithm doesn't help you at all to write it down like that, to do 24 divided by 6 with that little you, you, little yeah. hooky thing. you <laughs> have hooky you, thing. You have to know it. You just have to know it. <laughs> right. And and they're so in tune to doing that that they – and so when kids go to do, like, the subtraction with borrowing, they know they're supposed to borrow something, but they're not always sure what. Mm-hmm. Or they'll borrow twice from the same number or, you know, they'll borrow from – a zero or you know those sorts of things that they know they're supposed to do something but they don't really understand what they're supposed to do so we try to teach it first so that they understand what's going on and then resort to okay there's an algorithm for this so let's see how this works and then teach that so you're doing how you do it and why you do it how you do it right which you know when when numbers get kind of out of order or scooched away, even when you're leaving a tip. I have been guilty of both things, leaving ridiculously small tips because some number was sort of scooched over too wrong and I didn't leave enough, and leaving ridiculously large tips because it was scooched over the other way a little bit too much. And that can happen. So you want to catch me when I move it the wrong way and you get a ridiculously big tip. That's the way that ought to go. (laughs) Let's talk about, as we're talking about how things work, let's talk about how Mathnasium works. We come to you, we're saying, I need help with my math skills. What happens next? Well, we do an assessment, and we determine where that student is. We build them a learning plan. They come into our center two to four times a week, and they work through that learning plan with the aid of our instructors. It is not one-on-one where the instructor sits down with that student for the entire hour that they're there. We do what we call rotating team teaching. Our student-to-instructor ratio is always four to one or below. And so the instructors move around between the students and help them with what they're working on. Everything that they do gets immediate feedback. So we don't send any homework home. They're not going home and doing anything. Everything is done in-house so that we can give them instruction and feedback right away while they're there. Um, like I said earlier, I can I then reassess them. Every three months we adjust that learning plan and do progress reports and show you how they're doing. Mm-hmm. And we just keep moving through. We have enrollment plans where depending upon the student how long you want to enroll them some students are with us um, in and out in six months some students stay with us for years it just depends upon the student what your goals are and you know what kind of support they need the name mathnasium just sounds so fun it sounds like we're going someplace where there are gymnastics or something but there are mental gymnastics is everything problem solving is there any physical activity to stimulate that brain activity or is this all sitting down and solving different types of problems what kinds of work do we do once we're inside those doors they're sitting down at tables Mm -hmm. and working with um the instructors using what we call desk tools there's we have visual aids that we use um we use manipulatives We draw a lot of pictures. Neat. Um, We do calculations on the tables. (laughs) You Um. mentioned (laughs) games that you like to do, games. Do you play games? During the summertime, we do. Mm -hmm. Um, During the school year, we have a time set aside for doing homework help. So there's not really enough time within that to worry about getting games out. They're very distracting. But during the summer, without that homework 
piece in there, we do incorporate a game time into each student's session. And it is a, <clears throat> excuse me, um, they're all math and logic games. So oh. we everything that we do is geared towards exercising their mind. <clears throat> For the child who needs the remedial work, this, this would be great. This sounds like <clears throat> tutoring on steroids. But there would be the child or the adult who they're just really gifted in this area, and they would love a little extra <clears throat> mental stimulation. Do you offer that as well? We certainly do. We do have enrichment programs. Um, the student that is gifted in math and wants an extra challenge, um, and oftentimes gifted students I don't want to say get left behind, but they don't always catch everything that's going on in the classroom because their minds are elsewhere. Um, they may think that something's too easy, so they kind of tune out a little bit, and then they miss the next thing. Um, or they're very, very good at memorizing, like we were talking about earlier, and mm -hmm. they memorize all the things, and they've got it, and they do well on the test, but then they never learned the concept behind it. So when the next topic comes along... They just have to learn that over again, and they don't really – they're not able to apply their previous knowledge because they never learned the concept. And we teach everything conceptually. I hear all the time, well, nobody ever showed it to me like that before. Yes. And that's what my life's work is, to make their lives easier by teaching them easier ways to get around it and figure it out. Um we can figure a lot of these things out logically without having to resort to the steps <laughs> that are, you know, it's often so important in the classroom. Sometimes it is just finding that right mm -hmm. person that uh, somehow the light bulb turns on. They have a gift for explaining. Here's why we're doing it this way and here's what it means. So that it's not just like these random numbers just going in and out of your head. We're trying to make sense of it. But you get that right teacher working with that student it just opens up a whole new world to them doesn't it you've seen this it does and it, it's often not only just the right teacher but the right pace for that student mm -hmm. um because in the classroom i was a classroom teacher you know you have sometimes 30 students depending upon where you're at and you have 30 students in a classroom of all different abilities and it's very very difficult to reach every single one of them it's difficult to reach the kids that are struggling it's difficult to reach the kids that have that have learning disabilities it's difficult to reach the gifted children when you're you can't you can't extend everything to them tend to go to the to lowest common denominator <clears throat> and start there Everything tends to mm -hmm. go to that level, you're saying? Everything tends to go to the middle. The middle. Yeah. Got because it. Because you're only one person in a classroom of 30 mm -hmm. students, and, and it's not because the teachers can't do their job well. I mean, what with what they're given, they do a wonderful, wonderful job. Um, oh, yes. There's so many great teachers. Hats off. Kudos. <laughs> a absolutely. But you cannot help each person individually in your classroom. Like it's that. the hardest job in the world. The time. Yeah. Yeah. So, so they are getting an individual curriculum when they come to Mathnasium? There's not like a one-size-fits-all? No, there's not. Everything is tailored to individual students. Um, if they're struggling with a topic, we repeat it. If they are getting it, we take it out. Um, so everything is catered towards that student. It's not like there's a set curriculum that every student has to come in and they have to work through this. Um, everybody's doing their own at their own pace. It's summertime. Do you yes. have anything special going on in the summer? We do. We have a summer program, and it works the same as our year-round program, except it runs June, July, and August. And we are running a summer promotion right now that if you sign up before the end of May, that you receive um, free registration and a 10% discount off of our summer enrollment prices. Cool. So just mention that you heard it here. <laughs> on the light. And, <clears throat> excuse me. So, and it works the same way, except we have added in, like, that extra game time, but the students will work from June 1st through August 1st, August 31st, I'm sorry, and and then if they want to continue on past that, we still can enroll them into our regular programs. Where do we find you? <clears throat> we are located at 4644 Belden Village Street Northwest here in Belden Village. Um, we are down Belden Village Street down near Everhard Road in the Dollar Tree Plaza. Mm -hmm. And 
our phone number is 330-492-6284. Can we give that one more time? 330-492-6284. And you have a website? We do have a website. It is mathnasium.com slash Belden Village. And you can go there and see our testimonials and the results that we get um, in general across the board. There are many, many Mathnasium franchises throughout the world. And they, you know, provide some of that information, that feedback for you there at our website. You were a math teacher, but there was something about this. I was a science teacher. You were a science teacher. Yes. <laughs> oh, you, you know, I'm, now I'm even more <laughs> intimidated by you than I was when we began. But, there, but something about this really drew you in to be able to be involved with this, not just because you can own your own franchise, but that you really can make difference in people's lives. Talk about that a little bit. What's it meant to you? <clears throat> I was a science teacher, and I was a biology major, and I ended up teaching physical science to ninth grade students, and I would have honor students that were in Algebra one that were getting A's in Algebra one coming into my science classroom, and not only wondering why we were doing math and science, but not being able to do it and not mm. being able to apply it. Mm. And there is a disconnect between doing math and applying math. Common Core is trying to solve that disconnect. I mean, that was the point of the Common Core math was to do application from the very beginning. So if students start out in first and second and third grade applying math every day, then they don't walk into science and say, why are we doing math in science class? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was always my pet answer to say, you learn math so that you can do science. Okay. So you have to be able to learn math in order to do science you just you can't do it without it and that was pretty much my reasoning for wanting to do something like this is because I help every student that walks through my door and I couldn't do that as a classroom teacher it was too it was too out of my out of my hands I couldn't teach math to all the kids in science class mm -hmm. <laughs> they mm -hmm. had to be able to do it and so I <clears throat> decided that there was something <clears throat> that was, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, that I could do to help them in general. And, and we like to get them when they're young. We like to get them when they're like first, you first find out that they may be struggling or you first find out that they need some enrichment when they're around first, second grade. That way they're going to reach their full potential. But it's really never too late. Um, well, as you said, you've had retirees come through yes. the door and say, I'm going back to get my degree and I need to brush up on the math part of this. And so your the oldest person you've ever worked with is how old? Do she you know? She was over retirement age. Okay, so <laughs> over 65. Yeah. Okay, we'll just, we'll, we'll give her that dignity. And then youngest person you've worked with is? Um, I had a preschooler. Really? Come in. Um, and, and he is probably going to be coming back to me. But he is a little whiz at math. So, um yeah, he was in preschool and doing pretty advanced math for our preschooler. Wow, wow. Yeah. Well, it's wonderful what you're doing Thank and you. uh, honestly helping so many. There's no reason to struggle with math anymore. You want to give Dawn a call. Uh, Dawn, give us that phone number one more time, please. 330-492-6284. Now go to mathnasium.com slash Belden Village. Dawn Catalano, thank you so much for what you're doing in our community. Thank you so much for having me so I could talk to you about it.